G'day, this is Gary007, and welcome to my channel. So, this is a Hierophant Freezing Pulse Ice Bear Totem build. So, I'd like to sort of talk about my build here, and um, sort of give you a general overview, so that maybe you've got some ideas that you might want to put onto your own totem build, and see how you go with that. So, uh, this is a cheap uh, build. This is under 1x, so just under 1x. So you'd be spending most of your uh, chaos on a uh, six link item. So we'll go through and have a look at the build. I will be very brief. I'm not going to go through a step by step uh, build guide for each level. This is just the general overview of the build itself and what I was going for in the build. So let's just have a look at the character itself. So let's look at the inventory. So the most expensive part of this item is the soul mantle. So this is obviously a six link. Um, and on the six link we are running multiple totem support which is standard, uh, freezing pulse, cold penetration support, added cold damage, faster casting support and increased critical strike support. Now this build is centered around uh, critical strike uh, and faster casting. So all the items that I've got in here are sort of centered around increasing our critical strike chance and our ability to freeze targets on the move. Now this has got the freezing pulse uh, gem in it at the moment which you use for clearing. Now you can clear with ice spear but it's uh, kind of iffy at times. It's not that great at clearing. You can do it but just at a slow pace. It's completely up to you. So this build is obviously I've picked up a, um, a, a scepter. It's got um, lots of elemental damage. Uh, it's got 15% chance to freeze. So it's and it's got about 106 increased critical strike chance. The gloves I'm wearing is the Conjurer gloves. I'm wearing these because it's got critical strike chance on there. It's got 143% increased critical strikes. It's got a bunch of energy shield on it. But the kicker with these gloves is that they increase your mana consumption. So it increases the cost of spells. So you, um, I'll show you how to balance that out uh, with a Hierophant build. So I use these because of the critical strike chance on them. Uh, the head is just your standard head. Uh, lots of resistance, stuff like that. Whatever you can get your hands on um, through drops or buying them off the auction house. Uh, Topaz rings are obviously standard for a totem build like this. Just 60% uh, reduction in curse effects on you. The neck is just a standard. It's got a little bit of spell damage, 22 spell damage. Uh, but depending on your budget, you might just be running a bit of life and a bunch of resistances or mana, depending on your play style. Now the Jiggling Spirit Shield. Uh, I'm wearing this because of the critical strikes chance for spells so that helps me um, in that regards and it's got a bunch of uh, uh, energy shield on there as well got a 500 energy shield which helps out um, our defenses and stuff like that and just the baited breath a chain belt you know I'm wearing this at the moment it's a cheap belt but it's really good for energy uh, regen or uh, if you get hit so it helps uh, um, in case the recharge rate of your energy shield. So that's what it's sort of around because the builds are 50 50 at the moment. I've got about 3,200 live and almost 3,000 energy shields. So it's a 50 50 build. This you can take it in any direction you like. Um, but I'm just giving you a general eye view of what I was going for. I was really going for a 50 50 and I was going for a critical strike chance increase and freezing chance when it comes to freezing pulse and ice spear totem and the boots uh, just your standard uh, uh, conjurer boots it's got a gr uh, good amount of elemental resistances 25 to movement speed which is always good um, compulsory i think to have something like that and it's got increased uh, energy shield so they're really just good standard boots now at the moment um I am running the totem build with a freezing pulse. So freezing pulse at the moment. So if I stack it all up, I'm getting about 63,000 uh, DPS out of it. 
and that's because of the curses. Now, one of the things that this build relies on, and this is one of the few things that you need to get in your build, is you need to get a self-flagration uh, jewel. So this jewel, uh, you get 20% increased damage per curse on you, and an additional curse can be applied to you. So this basically increases your DPS tenfold type thing. So that's that there, that jewel there, is going to be something you want to invest in heavily in order to get the best jewel. But whatever you get, still get the jewel, even if it's a lower quality value, because it, that's that's sort of what clinches the this um, build together. It holds it together in, in DPS terms. So, yeah, so overall, right, um, depending on the market, the Soul Mantle, a six link, will set you around 50 um, chaos, uh, 30, 40 chaos. Uh, be very careful. A lot of people corrupting stuff, throwing them in on the auction house, but the corruptions themselves are, the penalties are absolutely awful, like minus 16% to life. It means anything percentage like that you don't want to get. Uh, so be very careful about the corrupted stuff that you're looking at and also make sure it's the right colored sockets. Uh, for you to be able to run your totem build properly. So basically it's my centered, I've got increased critical strike chance on this. So everything, um, and also on the passive tree, if we come up here, I've got increased critical strike up here, 30% increased critical strike for spells, um, 10, 10, 20. So it's a good area to get um, increased critical strike and also Critical mastery, uh, if you go into it, is a hundred and fifty percent increased critical strike against enemies on full life. So when you're dropping this and you're clearing maps, the first hit um, you get a bonus of uh, being able to inflict critical strike chances on it. So that that's a nice little mastery up there as well. Um, I think that was the only one that I went for. I think there might have been. I think there's something somewhere. I've probably missed. However, but that that's a good little um, section up here to come and get increased critical strike. So what does it look like? Uh, so at the moment, Freezing Pulse is sitting at... Uh, let's have a look at it. Increased critical strike. So my Freezing Pulse is sitting at 69.28%. Critical strike chance. Critical strike multiplier, 272 uh, chance to freeze 50% right so you're able to freeze anything on a map super 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 quick right so and if I switch over right so at the moment I've got I spare here so I'll switch it over take out freezing pulse and have a look and I have 15,000 879 so if we look here I have a gem here so this one is for uh, uh, freezing pulse and if we just take this gem out 16,000 and if we whack it down We got 27,500 uh, freezing pulse damage. But that's really, it's it might seem, oh, well, that's less than freezing pulse, but it's not really. It's the way the damage is calculated. So the damage here, critical strike chance is 77.94. Now, I'm sure you could probably get better um, with uh, gear. You could probably push it a little bit harder. Somewhere there's probably a, um, something on the tree where you can add more crit chance to it. But it's like trying to balance out what the overall goal of the build is and also your defenses so this this here um, obviously is a two stage thing I spear the second stage is when it really has a massive impact with critical strike chance and that's where you do a lot of damage to bosses it's really good at bosses and and that's what I use to clear bosses um, you clear maps piece of cake um, you're able to do a lot of damage um, using freezing pulse, clearing maps, uh, you walk through and do basically everything and you're pretty much 
don't have an issue. Nothing's going to come near you. So the biggest thing about this build, right, is obviously it's centered around totems, but the defensive layers I like to talk about a little bit more than just the offensive stuff because the defensive stuff is what keeps you alive. So the biggest thing with the totem build, um, uh, where is it? So when you go into totems and that, there's there's a totem mastery. Totems taunt enemies around them for one second when summoned. So when you're summoning totems, mobs are going to run to them because you've summoned totems and they're getting aggro by the totems, which lets you become free, lets you to run around. So if something's chasing you, you just drop another totem and they'll just go for that totem. Uh, defensive layers, um, of course, we've gone for um, mind over matter, which is a big thing, and also um, uh, wicked ward uh, energy shield recharge is not interrupted by damage if recharge began recently. Forty percent less energy shield recharge rate. So how do we counter that? Uh, the belt, the belt has fifty percent increased recharge rate. So you get 10% more in, uh, recharge rate by having this belt on. So what does all of this gear sort of cost? I guess you probably want to get it, um, understand what, what's involved. This gear you can get under one exalt. All of this gear, like that's a C, um, that's a chaos, chaos, that's 50, that's your biggest investment. A couple of chaos, five chaos if you want, one chaos. Uh, found that, didn't cost me anything, cut the chaos here, uh, and probably four chaos, five chaos, oh no, I probably got that for like ten chaos at uh, on the auction house, because I was looking, it had particular stats that I liked about it, increased damage, critical strike chance, and had 15% chance of freeze, so all in all, it didn't really cost a lot, and as this league got on, I got a little bit of currency and I updated my gems uh, so that uh, that that'd be the, your next step is updating your gems to make sure that um, that you get the quality to twenty percent on your gems and so on and so forth. And that that's when it starts getting really expensive. It gets ch it's cheap to start off with, clear maps not an issue, um, but as you get into tier sixteen maps. You're trying to refine your gear, squeeze the lemon a little bit more to try and get more DPS out of your class, try and find ways to be survivable and stuff like that. So that's what happens. The overall build is built around, uh, obviously, mind over matter. So there's 30% damage. Now, Hierophant Tree is going to be a little bit different to what you see other people go for. A lot of people go for Arcane Blessing and stuff. but uh, um, So obviously you get plus one to totems. Totem placement speed, and of course uh, you get regen to from totems and stuff, stuff like that. But this is where I like Hierophant. Um, so you got divine guidance, thirty percent increase in mana, ten percent of damage is taken from mana before life, uh, transfiguration of mind. So that ten percent damage is taken before mana. So now you're looking at um, ten percent there and mind over matter so that you're looking at 40 percent damage that you'll receive from mana before you'll receive damage coming out of your energy shield then your life the other cool part about this is if you go straight to sanctuary of thought and this is probably the best i think out of the passive tree uh, gain 20 percent of maximum mana as extra maximum energy shield so you'd go from about a thousand energy shield to you gain another thousand straight off the bat, uh, depending on your mana. Twenty-five percent increase mana reservation effectively of skills. One percent increase area effect. Up to fifty universal maximum mana. Up to a hundred. Fifty percent less mana cost of skills, because the cost of skills is the big kicker. So this is costing me hundred and three mana per cast per, for totem. But if you, if you look at my mana regen, if I see, see I'm smashing it. My ran is coming back, really good. You know, I, I'm not worried about mana regen, the way this class is going, right? So the other sort of thing that I'm running with um, is I've got two uh, curses that I choose from. I've got Enfeeble and Frostbite, depending on how I feel the map is going to go, right? So if I feel like I want to be more defensive, I'll throw an Enfeeble, which reduces the damage I'm going to take. And I feel more uh, offensive than I'd run Frostbite. It really depends at the end of the day. 
but the map speed clearing on this thing is absolutely a gem, right? So you'll be able to clear maps like no tomorrow uh, with this class. But I just wanted to give you an overview of the build itself and uh, the defensive layers that you do have within the build in order to make this work. So yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this short guide and um, yeah, all right then. I'll see you out on the plains of Path of Exile. Okay then. Uh, bye.